Most SEOs are chasing backlinks, blog content clusters, technical audits, all that kind of stuff. But they're missing out on one of the easiest SEO wins I've ever found. Seasonal keywords, the kind that spike every Mother's Day, Easter, Valentine's Day, Black Friday, all kinds of holidays, right? And today I'm going to show you how to find those keywords, what kind of niches they really work in well, how to rank for them, and how to add a few thousand dollars of revenue with very little work in just a few days every single year. So let's get into it. First and foremost, people suck at shopping. There are always last minute. I have known Easter is coming up for days, weeks really, and I'm still going to buy flowers at the very last minute for someone across the country, okay? Um, it's actually what inspired me to make this video, just kind of rehashing the whole seasonal keyword thing. People are chronically late shoppers, no matter how much time they have to prepare. Black Friday, Mother's Day, Father's Day, how many times have you bought a gift in the last like three days and you were looking for anything that will just desperately get there on time, right? The good news is you're not alone. Everyone does this, okay? So seasonal, like seasons like Easter, Mother's Day, Father's Day, um, any birthdays, you know, year round, all these kinds of things can create seasonal spikes in search volume that can quite literally, if you rank number one, add thousands of dollars in revenue within a weekend or within, you know, a few days of time. So there's super easy wins and I'm going to break down how to do it. Okay. So here we go. All right. So first and foremost, a couple of things about seasonal keywords before we get into them. All right. Um, I'm going to use ChatGPT to help me kind of come up with a short list of niches I'll work in and then as well as the keywords that would work for like one or two niches, all right? This won't work for everything, okay? If you're selling something pretty evergreen like supplements, like no one's buying Mother's Day supplements. Sorry to tell you, like that's just not happening, okay? Same thing if you're selling like some higher ticket product like couches, like maybe you catch like some sale dates, you know, like uh, Black Friday sales, things of that nature, but like you're probably not buying your mom a couch, right? Or you're probably buying a couch for someone's birthday, okay? It's like these only work with like lower ticket products that are kind of more thoughtful, right? The first things that come to my mind when I think about seasonal keywords, and I'm gonna use ChatGPT to help me come up with a longer list of these keywords, like of these niches that would work. Flowers and chocolates. Um, maybe like, maybe candles as well, but like small giftable items, okay? It's so like if you're in the gifting space, pay attention to this, all right? So um, let's just go to ChatGPT, all right? I want to create list of season so like I said flowers like Easter Easter is today okay like I waited to the last minute to send flowers across the country um, to my mom for Easter okay I'm a chronically last minute shopper. These seasonal pages work wonders on me. Okay. I literally Googled Easter flowers, in my hometown, and I bought, I bought from the first result. Okay. I am like one of many hundreds of millions of people that are chronically late shoppers. Um, these seasonal pages will not get traffic year round. However, they will spike at the right time. And again, if you rank number one, you're going to make a lot of money. The reason is because everyone ignores these keywords because they're low in search volume, but that's because they're thinking about it in like, a vacuum okay they're not they're thinking about the entire year they're not thinking about how much revenue they can add in a few days and if you can just kind of separate that you can make a lot of money okay these are like some of the collections we put together for all of our brands all the time and it works so well they will bump like depending on the brand like we've seen bumps as high as like 40 or fifty thousand dollars inside of like a weekend um black friday we've seen jumps like well in the hundreds of thousands of dollars in a weekend um mother's day crushes for some products so it can vary right but like don't look at a Mother's Day keyword in Jan in July and be like, yeah, yeah, it's too low in volume. Well, no kidding, it's July, right? However, fast forward to you know April, May, people are gonna be searching for that, and you're gonna make a lot of money if you rank number one. Okay, so anyway, um, give me a list of other niches or other products this would work for. Okay, so first I'm gonna give you like a full list. Well, ChatGPT really is gonna give you a full list of kind of what this would work on, okay? So I said chocolates and flowers. I bought those season seasonally, so I know they work, okay? Candles, bath bombs, like any beauty, like beauty bundles, beauty gift bags work really well. Um, skincare kits, same thing. Tea and coffee, I actually just recently learned that tea is a very giftable product. I didn't know that. I just started drinking tea, which is probably why I didn't know it. Um, gourmet snacks probably works. Um, snacks are really giftable, obviously, Food and beverage is having quite a moment in DVC right now, so these are really giftable as well. Um, 
and who doesn't like getting food in the mail? That's a great gift. So that works well. So maybe journals, maybe, I don't know about those. Keychains, probably not. Plants could work. I, like they probably would skew more feminine. I guess most of these gifts would probably skew more feminine than masculine in nature, but either way, personalized mugs, probably not. Socks, socks crush. I actually work with two sock brands and they crush on seasonality. Um, artisanal chocolates. Yeah, that's the same thing I said earlier is chocolate. Um, spring, Mother's Day. Yeah, jewelry. Jewelry's actually a good one too. Um, jewelry's like such an easy gift to get for your mom or your girlfriend or, you know, the woman in your life, let's say. Um, women in your life, let's say. Um, jewelry's an easy one, right? As long as you're getting like a not ugly piece of jewelry, they all like it. So you can just like Google, like you can search for seasonal stuff. People will search for seasonal stuff and buy it because it's the right color at the right price at the right time. Okay. So these things kind of work, right? I'm going to stick with, um, I'm going to do flowers and chocolates because like, I'm going to do flowers and chocolates because those are the two, like those are I think the two best of the list we're looking at. Okay. So, all right, let's stick on the chocolates and flowers. Okay. So, all right. Give me a list of every seasonal keyword you can think of for both flowers and chocolates. Um, separate them by, let's say, chocolates and flowers. And within each category, separate them by comma. The reason I'm separating by comma, I just want to paste some SMRush very easily and see what the volume is I'm looking at, okay? Um, list like every major holiday you could think of, plus seasons and even birthdays, as those can be good. Even something like specific birthdays, like 40th birthday would be really good. Um, all right, so let's start here, let's see what Chad's got. Okay, flowers, we've got Valentine's Day flowers, Mother's Day, Easter, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Halloween. I'm not reading all these, okay? 21st birthday, wedding, um, spring, congratulations, housewarming, St. Patrick's Day, teacher appreciation, Chinese New Year, Ramadan, a long list, right? I've seen a lot of flower companies, florists, if you will, <laughs> um, just trying to rank for something like flower or like the basics, like they'll just do like, you know, wedding flowers, They'll throw up as an, an Easter flower, you know, collection every once in a while. Um, this, this is the basics. And I think what, what not, I think what they're doing is, is really limiting themselves in terms of search. Okay. Flowers, the only thing, I mean, I don't know enough about flowers. By no means am I a green thumb. I've killed a ton of plants in my apartment. However, flowers are really just changing by seasonality to a degree, as well as the color and kind of like the way you display but if you're a florist, you have enough, you have enough, you have a sufficient amount of flowers to pretty much repackage them in any way you see fit, whether it's a happy occasion, a sad occasion, a winter, fall, spring, summer occasion, all these things like you can provide. So you really just are repackaging the same flowers in a different manner. Okay. Now, same thing with chocolate. Chocolate is chocolate. Okay. Package it how you want. It's still chocolate. Valentine's Day is obviously a big spike. Mother's Day is probably good. Easter is fantastic. Halloween's huge. All the same things, okay? So if you're an e-commerce store, like, I'm going to show you what the search volume is going to be in SEMrush and how much easier these are to win comparatively to just like floral, like, you know, bouquets or something like, you know, chocolate gifts. Like these are going to be so much easier to win, okay? So let's just copy the flowers ones and we'll start here. So I'm just going to paste these all into surf or into SEMrush. And we're going to get some volume here, okay? So I'm just going to copy all these because it, did. Okay, total search volume is 228,000, right? Now, if you can win all 228,000, kudos. That's sick, okay? However, even so, like, you're going to be better off selling. You're going to be better off competing on, like, some of these smaller KDs. Like, let's look at some of these easier ones. Like, all right, maybe not that one. Um, like, proposal flowers, 320 searches a month, KD of three. Prop flowers, 4,400 a month, KD of six. Proposal is an evergreen thing. Proposals happen all the time. They mostly happen in the summer, so you'll definitely see more of a raise around that point. However, prom obviously happens in like May to June, the end of a high school year. Super huge spike in that time. You can see a huge bump in sales if you rank number one, and the KD is crazy easy, okay? Um, what else is a good volume here? Graduation flowers, same thing. 
KD of 13, 55, 5400, again, spiking around May, June, July. Uh, moving down, baby shower flowers, 1300, 17 KD, pretty good. Those are year round as well. So those aren't even seasonal, that's evergreen, right? Um, Halloween flowers, didn't know that was a thing. 2900, so nearly 3000 searches a month, KD of 18, okay? These are all less than 20 and I've just named four or five and immediately suggested to you nearly 15,000 in search volume that is on the table for a pretty easy picking, okay? Summer flowers as well, that one's probably more competitive than it actually is. Um, but obviously you can see like there's this huge drop in the, huge drop in the winter because no one's buying summer flowers or searching for them. 12,000 as well. Christmas flowers, also huge spike. Again, Christmas, summer, more seasonal than something like, um, you know, baby shower. But I'm telling you, like if you're a florist or a flower company, I'm like, you should create a collection for every single holiday that you could possibly exist, like that could possibly exist. Okay. People. You're selling flowers like you can just re keep repackaging them in different ways in different colors different arrangements different numbers whatever just to suit this particular kind of you know this particular need for someone buying flowers right now it, it's gonna be, it's gonna be theoretically great if you rank number one for like you know birthday flowers right that's me a couple thousand a month sweet but let's say you also rank for 30th birthday flowers 40th 50th 21st 18th whatever, like now you're stacking even more volume up and those, and those pages, because they're a longer tail keyword are going to convert it at an even better rate. And again, like birthdays, evergreen, right? Some of these ones like prom, um, proposals, back to school, all of those are very seasonal, but again, in the right market, if you, you know, if you ship like a pretty good distance, you're, if you ship your flowers, like within a pretty good radius, you're going to make a lot of money in a, in the matter of a few days. And the good news is you're going to be, you're going to be competing against pretty much nobody. Because I have worked in like probably 40 to 50 different niches in e-commerce, like definitively different or uniquely different. I have not seen anyone do seasonal keywords ever. And we pretty much are ranked in the, ranked the top three. Every single brand we push these collections out on every single time. Like no one is competing on them ever. There's such an easy one to get. And I cannot believe more people are not doing it. Let's look at chocolate. Okay. Same thing. So that chocolate was like, our flowers were 228,000 if we selected all of them. Yeah. Okay. So like, let's try chocolate out now. Okay. 16,000, not nearly as glamorous <laughs> as um, flowers. And I also just learned this is the first time I, for Easter. First time I bought flowers um, online in quite some time. Flowers are an extremely profitable business. It looks like um, it's wild to me that I have to pay $90 to ship flowers um, a few miles away from my house, but here we are. Um, chocolates are good as well, though. Obviously, some big spikes as well. Fall, sympathy. Those are kind of evergreen, I guess, in a bad way. Um, anniversary. Anniversary is great. Every man on earth forgets their anniversary. A lot of women do, obviously, as well. Um, anniversary chocolates can provide nice kind of spikes year-round. It's great. Um, anniversaries typically around seem to be around holidays, as that's when a lot of people kind of commemorate their relationship. You know, you're all emotional around the holidays, things of that sort. Anniversaries seem to have a tendency around there as well as around summer. Corporate gift chocolates. Not a high volume, but corporate gift chocolates are like a multi-thousand dollar order. Okay. I used to work with a cookie company many years ago. 40% of their business was done between the days of December 1st and December 31st when, Chris, when companies were giving out Christmas cookies, like corporate cookies to their clients and also to their employees. So corporate gift chocolates, low volume, super easy KD means it's easy as hell to win. Average order volume can be in the thousands. Definitely worth creating this one. New Year's chocolates, obviously spikes very definitively around New Year's. Baby shower, um, evergreen, personalized evergreen. If you do that, that's pretty cool. Chocolate party favors, more parties in the summer typically. That's a good one. Um, birthdays, evergreen, Halloween, probably be a harder one to win than Samurai's is leading on. But in any case, Mother's Day chocolates, again, a good last minute gift. If you're a chocolate company or you're a fl floral company, I would actually bundle flowers and chocolates in one collection. I would just like third party source, whatever you don't have and put like a flower and a chocolate bundle together. No joke. When I sent those flowers, I almost spent $45 on chocolate. Almost. I thought about it. I didn't, but I thought about it. <laughs> 
Um, I get, I guarantee you get a couple more people on that um, than you would have gotten with me and your AOV goes up that weekend, okay? These things work really, really, really well. Um, Christmas chocolates, same deal, su super easy KD, big spike around Christmas, right? You're already gonna spend a couple hundred bucks, a couple thousand bucks on Christmas gifts across the board. What's a 20 or $30 box of chocolates? Pretty much a negligible spend, okay? However, you find a hundred or a thousand people or in this case, 2,400 people with a negligible amount of money to spend, you got yourself like $10,000 $10, here, easy. So seasonal keywords, huge win, build more of them. You should have a collection for every single one of these. And the collection page creation is very simple. Same as with all the other collections, URL in, or excuse me, keyword in the URL, the meta title, the meta description, the page title slash H1, um, the very first sentence of your collection description. And then obviously you should have a couple hundred words of copy um, on that collection page. It should be mentioned a few more times as well as within the head, like the subheadings of the H2s and H3s. And you should also build internal links between similar holiday collections. So like if I'm looking at a Christmas chocolate collection page, it, I should be able to go and click to the, another season, something like, oh yeah, let's let me shop your New Year's chocolate or your Halloween chocolate or your Valentine's Day chocolate, right? So you connect the dots with similar collections, which goes really well as well. Um, and again, like these pages are not gonna drive traffic all year round, right? Christmas, like it's April right now. Christmas chocolates is gonna get approximately zero clicks. <laughs> like right now, and probably not until like maybe November. However, once in November, December picks up, Easy way to just leverage this page again. Don't archive the URL once Christmas is over. Just take, like, put it in your main nav two months before Christmas comes up. Take it out right after Christmas is over and put in the next holiday and then just keep recycling these, right? So like in theory, take out like December, November 1st, put in the Christmas one or maybe put in Thanksgiving because there's probably, there's probably a Thanksgiving keyword here. Yeah, so Thanksgiving I would do from like, for example, November to end of November, November 1st to November 27th or whenever the hell no, uh, Thanksgiving is. Right after that, put in Christmas. Christmas will run from end of November to end of December. After the, on the 26th of December, maybe even the 25th, put in your New Year's one, leave that one running through like the early part of January. After that, you could do like Lunar New Year. You could do Valentine's Day, Easter again, Mother's Day, Father's Day, you know, all these kinds of things all the time, right? So I'd leave like your evergreen collections, like your evergreen gifting collections in the main nav, or at least on the homepage pretty regularly. But the ones that are seasonal, you just kind of need to cycle them in and out. Cause again, you don't need them ranking all year round. You don't care about that. But in any case, I urge you to build more of these. Um, even outside of chocolate and flowers, there are tons of wins to be had. Black Friday, every major kind of Hallmark holiday, every bank holiday, all these things are good. So go with more of them. And if you like this video, Follow me on Twitter, follow me on LinkedIn, subscribe here, drop a comment, said you liked it, hit my newsletter, all that good stuff.